Okay, this video is going to show you how to create your data class, and the data class is going to be where your helper functions are going to work, the ones that are going to help you do your queries, use your database, collect data, etc. etc. Okay, now in this project, you can see in Solutions Smart I haven't got one, so if you already got one, don't follow this blindly. Okay, we want to add something new to our project, we need to select the project name, which is web project for this template. Then we can, well, we can right click on it and say add new item, and that should bring up the new sorts of things that we can add. So you could add a new web form, but in this case, I want to add a class and I'm going to call it data. Right, so let's chug away and create that. Now, the libraries that we will need, we'll need some extra ones, and these will just include the same ones every time. I always put a little So we're going to need system data library. We're going to need the system dot web. You see, it comes up with the picker user interface library. Yeah, that's what we need. And if you include these in all the code that you um, use, you'll probably find you won't need to add any extra unless you're doing something weird. So that's the HTML controls and the UI and system.web. Make sure you use the picker and then you won't make spelling mistakes in the web controls. Okay, so they're the four that I'm going to add. I may add in the future new ones. Okay, inside this class, the first thing I need is a connection to my database. And all my helpers are going to need access to this. Now you should already have your database in your app data folder. There's mine called data.mdb. So I'm going to put that underscore data slash data.mdb. Okay, so I'm going to put XML comment connection string. I just put three slashes to do that. Right, well we're going to create four helpers. One to run queries and give us the result, select queries. One for doing insert queries, which doesn't need to give us any results back. One for doing delete queries and one for doing update queries. They're all going to look pretty similar. So let's do the select one first, so public static, and it's going to return a data view. That will be a list of the results that came back from a query. So I'm going to call this execute um, right, two parameters we'll have for this string, the command, the SQL commands we want to do, and any parameters, any data for the query. Only the most basic query wouldn't have parameters. So whenever you create a function or routine, always put the braces in at the start and then you'll reduce the number of errors. Okay, we've first of all got to create a way of accessing um, the access database. I'm going to use that an access data source for that. And I'm just going to call it com and it's an object, so we need to create a new instance of it. Then we can tell it where the database actually is that we want to connect to. That's the data file. And that is our connection that we just defined here. We've already just defined that. Okay. Then we want to set the um, SQL command. So that's the select command. I'm going to call the command parameter that we passed, this one. Okay, so that sets up the basics. The next thing we'll need to do is check for parameters and add any. So I'll just put a little comment there. Um, I'm going to leave the blank line as well just for comedy purposes. So I'm going to say if parameters are not equal to null, so we actually had some for this and we don't need to have that. What 
we're going to do is we're going to use a fancy kind of loop called a for each loop which automatically works out how many there are of anything so in our parameter list it'll look for how many parameters we've got and we can then say for each one add a select parameter okay so add Then we can execute our, once we've got everything set up, we can execute our SQL command, but we want to return a data view. So we're going to return data view. So we cast, that's what that's called, what this will give us back. So that's going to be select. Now, this next thing, I don't actually know what it is. I've never bothered looking. Um, oops, spelling it wrong. Data source select arguments dot get I've never looked into what it is I've never used it there's probably something very useful that I can do with that but I'm not I'm just keeping it bog standard okay so that will execute a select command um, fill a data view and send it back to us so that we can process it later on now we can do the same thing for an insert query so let's create that so public but this doesn't need to um, return anything. Okay, so we say public static void execute insert. I'm going to keep the names. Execute insert, and it's going to have the same. In fact, I'm going to copy and paste the parameter list. So I've just copied that. And the parameter list. I want a command and potentially parameters again. Okay, now most of this is going to be similar. So I'm going to copy these first bits, copy and paste from the um, select one. Now I don't want to set the select command. This time, what I want to do is select the insert command. Okay, insert command is the command I want to execute, and the parameters aren't going to be select parameters. They're going to be insert parameters. And when I come to execute the insert, I just need to say insert subroutine. Remember, if they come up pink in that tick list, they're subroutines. If they come up with the little white properties hand, they're properties, which means you set a value. Okay, but because there param there's no parameters required for that, we just execute it. So I'm going to create ones for update. Update. And again, that's going to be identical. So I'm just going to copy that, and this is going to be very similar. And then similar change. So I'm going to copy that code. So I've got a correctly formed. Now to stop me cocking up, I'm going to say at the last brace, last pair of braces. just so I don't mess up there. So I've just said all code before the plan. So again, this is an update command, so I don't want to set the insert, so I'm going to change that to the update command. And they're not insert parameters, they're going to be update parameters. And I'm not going to run the insert command, I'm going to do the update command. Okay. I'm going to create one more for delete, and that will be the end of this video. So execute delete, string, command, some type of that's gone, parameter, selection, parameters, and we're going to create an access data source. going to set the delete command check for any parameters that tick is really annoying you got to make sure it's not just outlined it's solid so it must be a bug that because it's really overly annoying Now 
pressed tab twice there. Be very careful when you're copying and pasting. Okay. Very easy to put some extra brakes in just to keep it tidy. And then we'll perform the delete command. Okay, so let's quickly recap. We added the extra libraries. Don't forget to do that. When you do some of the other videos and you're adding forms and things, you'll need to put extra libraries in, otherwise you won't be able to work with things properly. We've got our connection string. We've got our execute and filters for our S SQL select queries. Now I'm going to, just above that, I've got my cursor just above the function. I'm going to go slash, slash, slash and create the summary box. I'm just going to put, you need to do this because you'll get marked for doing that. So I'm going to do it for each one. Then we've got the insert one, which is for doing new records. Should fill in these parameters as well, so that's and I'm not going to do them all. I'm going to leave that for you to do. Okay, and then I've got an update one and a delete one, and that's all you need for now.